Hello everyone, this is Latia for you coming today with another scripture from the Lord. We are in 2 Timothy chapter 2 verse 18 as well as 2 Corinthians chapter 4 verse 17. Let's go ahead and pray and we can get started. Thank you Father God for your word Lord Jesus. Bless your children. Help us to have understanding of the timeline of your scriptures, Lord God, help us to listen to you and not to man. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. All right, you guys, Second Timothy chapter 2, verse 18. Who have swerved from the truth, saying that the resurrection has already happened. They are upsetting the faith of some. So this was speaking about two specific individuals who were preaching that the resurrection had already happened. Um, and we know from the word of God, um, we have a collective version that um, that is going to occur um, at, after the great falling away, right? We know that all of those things have are a part of a timeline, right? And, and we know that before we are taken, the dead in Christ will rise first, right? And so they are saying, who have swerved from the truth, saying that the resurrection has already happened. They are upsetting the faith of some. And so there were, you know, speculations. And just as there are now, um, people saying one thing or another. And that's why we have to know the word, right? We need to read the word and we need the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit will tell you. The Holy Spirit will reveal things to you. First of all, you need to believe, right? If you don't have faith that the Holy Spirit will speak to you and you don't have faith that um, God is a God of relationship um, with a close personal relationship where he can actually speak, it's going to be very hard for you to hear, right? It's going to be hard to knock that wall down first. Um, you believe that Jesus died on the cross. You believe that he rose again. He atoned for your sins. Um, you need to believe the word of God and the word of God says that the Holy Spirit is a comfort, a comforter to us. And he, he Jesus needed to leave, um, so that we could have the Holy Spirit with us and have that personal one-on-one -on -one ability to commune with God. And so um, because of that, we can ask questions like this to the Holy Spirit and he will let us know. And then also we can study the word of God, because if we study, we don't have to be ashamed, right? We don't have to be condemned. We can look at the word of God and say, here is what it says. Um, so this is what I believe. So um, this part right here, it says, who have swerved from the truth meaning that there is a truth, right? And how do we know the truth? The truth is the word. We can look at the word. So these two men, I can't remember their names, um, who they're specifically speaking of are not going by the word of God, right? They're not looking at the prophecies because even if they didn't have the New Testament at that time, they could still have the prophecies and use those as, as much as they could you know, using the Holy Spirit um, to put together the timeline of of um, the coming of Jesus. And so it says, who have swerved from the truth, saying that the resurrection has already happened. And we know that there was a, a point when Jesus um, died and was resurrected, where there were other people who were seen that had been resurrected, but that was not the resurrection that comes before the rapture, right? The dead in Christ rise first. That would have been all of them, right? And so um, it says they are upsetting the faith of some. So meaning they are causing some people to possibly even fall away from God, right? Because they think that they have failed or somehow not made it. And so that is really bad. You don't want to lead anyone astray. You don't want um, anyone to um, lose faith because of something that you're preaching that is not the truth that has swerved from the truth. 
All right. And so this is, and remember, the second Timothy also has that verse, um, verse 15, that talks about um, study to show thyself approved. Um, I don't know the exact wording. My daughter is quoting this today over and over again, helping me to try to memorize it yesterday, yesterday. And so, um, yeah, I, I don't know the exact wording. Um, study to show thyself approved. Um, <sighs> I can't remember the exact wording of it. Um, so you, you're not condemned, rightly dividing the word of truth. Uh, I don't know the, all the wording, but it's verse 15 of Second Timothy chapter 2. And so, um, yeah, that's what we need to do. We need to study. We need to know that timeline. We need to know what the word says about that timeline. And that way, you know, we don't necessarily have to defend the timeline, but we need to know it for ourselves, right? So they're not upsetting our faith. So they're not, you know, causing us to fall away from God or causing us to stumble, right? We need to know it for ourselves, not just to try to teach others. You can teach others once the Holy Spirit, you know, tells you to go ahead and do that, but don't, it's for you. You need that firm foundation, right? All right. And so um, the conflated verse is Second Corinthians chapter four, verse 17, for this light momentary affliction is preparing for us an eternal weight of glory beyond all comparison. So remember, um, when the resurrection comes and then the rapture comes, there's going to be um, a great tribulation, right? And we know that what we go through is actually considered a, a affliction, a light affliction, right? Um, we're not going through the furnace as silver, we are 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 not experiencing that heavy refinement refinement our of our furnace is of affliction is what the bible says and so um it says for this like momentary affliction meaning that this affliction is not to last right this affliction that we fla- that we face on a daily basis the things that you go through the things that are challenging to you these things are light, right? In comparison to that, that wrath and that judgment that is going to come, that is not coming to the bride. It says for this light momentary affliction is preparing for us an eternal weight of glory beyond all comparison. So this for us is the light and momentary affliction, right? That we are to experience. We're not to experience tribulation, light momentary affliction. Um, and so that is something that we can stand on. That's something that we can know that what we face on a daily basis right now, yes, we are in the end times, but what we are facing is not tribulation. We are facing light momentary affliction and it's preparing for us an eternal weight of glory beyond all comparison. So what we do now is what is going to cause us to be, you know, have us uh, have an eternal weight of glory, right? So we're going to have something in heaven beyond our wildest imagination. We we don't have anything to compare to what God is going to do for us. And so we know that, hey, we can face these momentary afflictions, these light afflictions. We know that the resurrection has not happened. We will not swear from the truth. We will hold fast to the truth, hold fast to the word of God. Um, we're not going to have our faith upset, right? Because we know what we go through is something that we can face because God would not have put it on us if we could not bear it. Amen. And so we have to stay with God. Don't swear from the truth. Don't go to any strange teaching um, that is not of the truth. And just, you know, use everything, hold everything up to the light of the Holy Spirit and ask him, is this right? Is this not right? Right. We need the guidance of the Holy Spirit. And we know that the resurrection has not already happened. We know that um, we're still in this light of affliction stage, right? We would know the difference. (laughs) And so, yeah, that is the conflation for today. Let's go ahead and pray. 
thank you, Father God, for your word. It's so comforting. The Holy Spirit is so comforting to us. You are so good, Lord Jesus. Help us not to be a part of any strange teachings. Help us not to be a part of any of that. Help us to hold fast to the truth. Hold fast to your word, Lord God. Help us to realize that what we face is a light and momentary affliction. Lord God, no matter how hard it may seem, we know that we can face anything with you, Lord Jesus. We give you praise. We give you glory, Lord God. And we know we will see an eternal weight of glory beyond comparison. Help us to stick it out in Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. All right, you guys, if there's anybody out there who would like to receive Jesus as their Savior and Lord, go ahead and pray this prayer with me. But more than anything, believe it with all your heart as you confess it with your mouth. Dear Lord Jesus, I ask you to come into my heart. I make you my Lord and Savior. Jesus, I believe you died on the cross and I believe you rose again on the third day so that I could be saved. Jesus, I accept you as my Lord and Savior. Forgive me for all of my sins. Be my Lord. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. All right, you guys, if you pray that prayer and you believe that prayer, then the Holy Spirit has come into you and sealed you into the day of redemption. And no one can break that seal except Christ Jesus himself when he comes to redeem his church. The Holy Spirit is in you to lead you and guide you into all truth, meaning he is going to show you the way. He is going to give you everything you need to function and to, you know, live a life of godliness. Um, He is going to show you the way. Amen. All right, you guys go out, be baptized, um, find a church home, allow the Holy Spirit to lead you and guide you in that. Um, Find other believers to be around so that you can stay sharp. These are things that Jesus said that we should do and go out and be baptized in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, in the name of Jesus. All right, you guys, um, may the Lord bless you and keep you. May he make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you and give you as children his peace. Take care.